Corners, but Stanton's there. Stanton, Garland blocked that one superbly. Duncan driving it, Stanton! Edwards chips it forward, chance for Stanton. It's a goal! Stanton scores! Only two, Duncan. And Hibs have equalised with the last kick of the game. Master of these uh, dead ball situations. Hibs five men in the box. In goes Stanton. He's done it again. Stanton in a green and white jersey is a memory Hibs fans will always cherish. Pat, were you a Hibs fan as a youngster? Always have been, Jerry. Yeah. My whole family were Hibs supporters, so I was, I was steeped in it from the beginning. How did you actually get to Easter Road? What, what was the route? Well, I, th I, I was playing junior at the time for Bonnery Groves in Edinburgh, and I had the opportunity actually to go to the Hearts. Tommy Walker asked me to go to Tyne Castle. Um, I had a chance to go to various English clubs. Uh, Jockstein wanted me to go to Dunfermline. But, uh, you know, deep down in my heart, I wanted to play for the Hibs and eventually Hibs signed me. He just was a great player, a great player. And I mean, there's good players and great players and there's a divine line that Pat was a great player. A minute and a quarter of stoppage time as that one goes in. Knocked out by Prentice. Only two, Duncan. And Hibs have equalised with the last kick of the game. Family were Hibs supporters. Um, and the area, the town I came from, uh, there was a lot of hip supporters there, a lot of heart supporters as well, but I think the, the fact that the, my father was a great hip supporter and uh, and I wanted to play for him as well. Who were the players that you, I suppose, looked up to when you first joined the club as a, a younger player? Well, when I, when I first started training here as a youngster, Joe Baker was my hero here and uh, it was really something to be actually see him in the same dressing room. Um, um, who else played? Uh, always uh, Ronnie Simpson was in goal. S same again, you know, a tremendous goalkeeper and same again, you're, you're in awe of these people. Prior to me coming here to, to Hibs, Hibs had nearly been relegated in the early 60s. Um, my, my early uh, involvement with the team coincided with Jock Steen coming here and um, he transformed the place and uh, that team in the middle 60s here, well before Jock left and went to Celtic, that was a really good team. You know, they, they talk about the team in the, the early 70s here, but the team in the middle 60s was a really good team with people like Eric Stevenson, Pat Quinn, Neil Martin, Jim Scott, uh, tremendous team. I would say that the seven nothing game doesn't rate highly in my uh, memory. You know, it was uh, it was great to win at Tyne Castle. Uh, you know, the, over the years people keep uh, remembering you about it. But uh, there was other great games here as well. You know, playing Napoli and we beat Napoli five five nothing here. Dino's off was in goals, and so I don't suppose he, Dino lost five goals too often. Brownlee. What are your memories of that day? Well, it was a cold day, just like today, Tony. <laughs> um, and it, it doesn't seem like 25 years ago. But uh, now that you've mentioned it, I, it's, uh, it was an important day for the club. It'll be taken by Brownlee. There's Stanton. And it's just passed by McNeil and Evan Williams and McNeil looking at each other. A minute to half time, Edwards with the corner kick. Oh, a great save. Brilliant save by Williams, and what a header. Stanton running in hard, and the best possible kind of ending to a half. That's Cropley in beside the defenders. There's Stanton with a chance. And it's there. It's a goal by Pat Stanton. 15 minutes of the second half gone. A brilliantly engineered free kick by Hibbs. And it goes to Stanton. Good play by Hibbs again. a goal Jim Laurent 
21 minutes of the second half gone. The score, it's two, Celtic nothing. And what a brilliantly engineered goal again, coming from midfield and then Pat Stanton running well on the right. The pass eventually might have been meant for Alan Gordon, but it was a rock who came up eventually and got his head in to make it two nothing. And it goes to Brownlee. There's Stanton, Gordon, and just passed by a rock. Stanton. Stanton again. Well, in this past 20 minutes, we've seen the very best of that man there, Pat Stanton. Good tackle though by Hay. Opening it out, George Connolly. And here's Doug Leach with a chance for Celtic. Great chance for Celtic because we can judge it, he does. Beautifully taken by Doug Leach. 32 minutes of the second half gone. And that cup is going back to Edinburgh tonight. The final handshake. And there you are. Pat Stanton would join Celtic five years later and enjoy success with them. But he'll be remembered as a great hib skipper who excelled that day at Hamden, scoring the first goal and laying on the second. that team impressed you most? Well, I think I've already said, I think Alec Crop, he was a, a marvellous player for us, as was O'Rourke. Um, John Brownlee, probably outstanding, an outstanding fullback, unfortunately to receive an, in, an injury early in his career, and there was no telling how good he was going to be. Mm -hmm. But these are just uh, one or two, they're, they're really, it was a really good uh, team. Yeah. And of course the wee man from Fife. A real star, yeah. <laughs> but it's hard to believe, Tony. I was speaking to Alec not so long ago, and it's hard to believe that Alec never even got a Scottish cap. Mm -hmm. And when you think of some of the people who have got a few caps, mm -hmm. some are even in that Hall of Fame. Yeah. And that wee, that wee player never even got one. And that boy Higgins never got one either. Yeah. Well, uh, that's for another <laughs> chapter, Tony, I think. <laughs> and of course, on the left-hand side part, you had the, the flyers, you know, Arthur himself. Yeah. And Arthur's still going strong and looking great as well. He, he's, he's a wee bit greyer, but he still just looks like the same lad who turned up from came to us from Partick Thistle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And always the, the, that during that time as well, Pat, you, you played in that uh, magnificent victory against that team from the other side of Edinburgh. That's right, the, the, the Hearts, yeah. But uh, at that time, I always felt that somebody was going to walk into it because about a couple of days previous to that, we played Aberdeen here. And we beat Aberdeen, I think it was, was it 2-1 or something like that? It could have been 10. Mm -hmm. Quite easily, Bobby Clark was magnificent. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened when we went to Tyne Castle that day, and to be fair, Hearts could have quite easily been two goals up. Mm -hmm. But then once the, the first went in, it was just a, a procession after that. A career spanning many years at Hibs, uh, what characters do you remember vividly during your time? Oh, there's been some, uh, apart from yourself, Tony, <laughs> there's been uh, a, a f some... Uh, great players and, and a lot of the great players seem to be the great characters as well and mm -hmm. I think that's what got them through in the bigger games it, the bigger crowds didn't seem to bother these people mm -hmm. you know, I, I played with some great players like um, Willie Hamilton was a great player mm -hmm. uh, Eric Stevenson and the players in that 72 team but there was a lot of good players away in the early in the middle 60s when Jock Steen was here there was a real good team then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, people like John Fraser uh, Jim Scott uh, people like that, John McNamee, mm -hmm. so that that was a good team as well and it, it tends to get overshadowed a wee bit with the one, it was a really good team in the early 70s, don't get me wrong, but uh, that was a good team as well. And your wee pal Jimmy O'Rourke, he was a real character wasn't he? Oh well Jimmy and I went to school together and um, apart from playing here, uh, when, we ever, when we, Hibs ever went abroad and Hibs, used to, Hibs really had got, went on great tours in these days, I th probably we followed in the wake of the, uh, you know, the, the name that the famous five had uh, mm -hmm. made for themselves here and we would go t uh, to America for seven weeks on at a time and mm -hmm. Jimmy was my roommate <laughs> and uh, I shudder to think about the things we got up to, you know, now that we sit and talk about it, you know, um, but uh, it was a great time. I don't think we realised how lucky we were, Tony, at the time, mm -hmm. doing, being paid for uh, something uh, anybody else would have given their eye teeth for. And also you were nicknamed the Quiet Man, where did that derive from? Um, I think it was when it was my time to buy a round of drinks, Tony. <laughs> 
<laughs> I suddenly went quiet and disappeared in the toilet. Um, no, no, I was. I, I was never. I don't think I was quiet on the field. Um, but if, uh, the thing is, I think it, what it gave you the the, the the benefit during the course of the game, you could actually kick people <laughs> and get away with it. <laughs> and the ref, because the ref would say he wouldn't do anything. Oh, like Pat that. would never do that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, right. Uh, well, you haven't been quiet today, Pat. Thanks very much. You're welcome. I want off. You know, for Hibs. I mean, he was an internationalist, so you couldn't complain. I mean, he'd done everything. Good leader. Uh, off the park, really good leading you as well. I mean, set a good example. A Bernian football club could have played their last game in Scottish football. The Hearts chairman, Wallace Mercer, has launched a takeover bid for his Edinburgh rivals, which values the Easter Road club at £6.2 million. If it's successful, Hibs would be wound up. Announcing the bid, Mercer said he wanted to see only one club from the city play in the Premier League next season. You know, I never thought I'd see the day when I'd be standing here talking on an occasion like this. It, it makes me very sad indeed. But um, I'm not going to get involved in the politics of this thing, but I think a lot of us are very angry about what's happened here. But I personally don't want involved in anybody else's vision of what he thinks is good for Scottish football. Organisers say the hands-off Hibs campaign is gathering momentum. The situation's quite clear. We've got 36 and he's got 64, so in that we, we've won. There's no contenders, you know, that, that's it. Pat Stanton, what sort of problems does this cause the management and the playing staff at Hibernian, knowing there is this doubt? Well, putting it mildly, it, must make, it makes it very difficult. That the, the people standing behind us, the players, everybody connected with the club, the day-to-day -day running the club, the season's just approaching and nobody, doesn't, nobody at this present time knows what's happening. I think it's very unfair what's happened here. Just how unsettling would it be for the management and the players knowing that the season is only about a month away? Well, as regards players, new players coming to the club, it's very difficult to ask a player to come here when you don't know what the future is for the club. Do you think there's any way around it? No, I think the, the, the present group of players have just got to pretend nothing's happening and just get on with their training and keep themselves fit for when the season starts. But it, it must, it's um, very difficult for, for them to pretend that there's nothing going on. The Hibs fans was uncontrollable as the news broke that they'd won their fight to save the club. Rumours swept the city Wallace Mercer had withdrawn from the takeover battle. When the confirmation finally came, the fans celebrated. The fans sang themselves hoarse delighted Wallace Mercer had failed to win the necessary 76% to take control of the Easter Road Club. And joining in the celebrations were former Hibs legends, including Pat Stanton. I would love to see all the people getting really behind the club now. The people who don't go to all the games, I'd love to see them coming along. Uh, as, a, as a Hibs man, you must have been extremely worried a few years back uh, when the club almost went out of business. Yeah. Um and I think uh, later on you, you, you sort of realised or you found out that how close it had come. Um, uh, they were worrying times that they, when, at first when you heard it, you thought, oh, no, this will just blow over. But then the more you heard about it, you say, this is quite serious. How serious I didn't think uh, people realised at the time. But it had been a sad day um, if anything had happened to the hips. Um It really would have been. Edwards, one forward who hasn't scored. They're trying to lay it on for him. Stanton, Garland blocked that one superbly. Runners up in the league to the great Celtic side. Should have done better. And then inside that team, you had all these lads who were internationals. We were playing the likes of Juventus at Easter Road, Leeds United, Napoli, uh, Hadjuk Split. All these teams were at Easter Road at the time, Sporting Lisbon. And that was the level Hibs were operating at the time. Good players were doing it. And hopefully, uh, good players will do the same again. So what you may be saying is some of these players have got to respect the tradition of the club. And your eyes, what this this club's all about? Yeah, I think you know it's you know big team. You know the Celtic and the Rangers have their traditions, and uh, I think other teams have their traditions. Hearts have theirs, Hibs have theirs. It's just a wee bit pride in the club and a wee bit pride in yourself. I was at Broadwood uh, last uh, at the second playoff game last season when uh, you know when it went if the, the second that the, the chap missed the penalty but I was sitting with Laurie Riley who's uh, he's been involved in some of the important games for the Hibs and he turned to me just prior to the kickoff he says you know this is the most important Hibs game I've been at that's, that's how that's, that's certainly come from him yeah it certainly is and we find ourselves in the same position again uh, this time we're at the bottom and there's you know hopefully uh, you know who knows even getting a playoff position but it's a uh, 
no, it's it, it's a wee bit sad. It's sad not to see the hibs at the moment, uh, but uh, they can pick up. Who knows what'll happen after Saturday? You may get the boots on again, Pat. Would you? Oh, they're not as bad as that. <laughs> <laughs> Some idea of the pressure. Rangers lead by four-two on corners, but Stanton's there. athlete and a right good footballer. Um, great, great club captain. He was captain of Turnbull's Tornadoes and who can forget on those European, European nights against Lisbon and Naples there is only one who goes by the name of Paddy Stanton Then goes Stanton He's done it again! Brownlee. And it's finally gone home for Pat Stanton. He's delighted with that. Stanton's there! Brownlee. Yes, Stanton is there! Hibbs had the chance for a quick killer break. 
Duncan driving it's Stanton. Driving it's Stanton. Driving it's Stanton. Edwards chips it forward. Chance for Stanton. It's a goal. Stanton scores. Yeah, the pressure Rangers lead by 4-2 on corners, but Stanton's there. Four minute and a quarter of stoppage time as that one goes in. Knocked out by Prentice. Only two. Duncan. And Hibbs have equalised with the last kick of the game. With the last kick of the game. With the last kick of the game. What?